Haunted Castle hit US arcades in 1988. The game was developed and published by Konami. The arcade isn't a sequel to the famous Castlevania game, which first released on the NES in 1986. Instead, the arcade is a standalone game that features the same type of platforming gameplay and even the same protagonist, Simon Belmont. But it is in no way affiliated with the Castlevania franchise whatsoever, even though it's clearly inspired by its NES counterpart. You would traverse through six stages, each with a unique boss fight. You had a graveyard, caverns, castle entrance, dungeon, castle tower, and finally, the castle bridge. You were given five minutes to complete each stage. Simon could jump and attack while standing, crouching, or in midair. The game had weapon pickups, of course. You'd start out with the famous whip, which could be upgraded to a flail, but you could also obtain a sword as well. Each upgrade would slightly add damage and change your attack range and or hitbox. Other weapons were limited use. These were called sub-weapons, and they came in the form of bombs, which were thrown like holy water, a stopwatch, which would freeze enemies in place for a short time, a cross that shot four projectiles in a straight line in front of you, and of course, boomerang and torches. These weapons costed you hearts to use, which were dropped by enemies randomly. However, these hearts weren't health. They just served as ammunition for special subweapon pickups. You could only carry one subweapon at a time. You couldn't switch between them. The weapon you picked up would replace the one you currently had equipped. Your health came in the form of energy, which is a bit weird considering that your ammunition was in the form of hearts. Your health energy granted you 16 hits before death. And as far as I can tell, there are no health pickups throughout the level. Your health energy would only refill after you defeated a boss and moved on to the next stage. You could also receive more health energy by inputting multiple credits into the machine. Speaking of bosses, the game had six, and while most were standard Castlevania fare, like Medusa, Frankenstein, and Dracula, there was one particular one that was super creative, a stained glass swordsman. <laughs> <laughs> Haunted Castle also featured an impressive amount of enemy variety, featuring mummies, mud monsters, harpies, and all those classic dark fantasy monsters you'd come to expect. The game was pretty difficult, but it was hard in a clunky, slow platforming way, where getting used to the slow jumps and pinpoint attacks were imperative to your success. But once you memorized enemies' attack patterns and spawn locations, the game became much easier. The arcade soundtrack, of course, featured classic Castlevania themes, like Bloody Tears, In fact, part of the game's soundtrack was composed by the same person that worked on Castlevania II Simon's Quest. It's definitely awkward that a game clearly based on the Castlevania series wouldn't carry the franchise name. It appears that the sole reason behind this was to create an original arcade game inspired by the 1986 Castlevania. Konami basically wanted its own standalone game. Although it is still extremely weird that it shares so much with the Castlevania franchise and is called Haunted Castle. I would like to bring up that some of the arcade flyers for the game are spectacularly bad. You gotta love these live action actors. The game was eventually ported many years later to the PS4 in 2017 as part of Hamster's Arcade Archive digital line, then once more as part of the Arcade Hits Anniversary Collection in 2019 for Nintendo Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Have a request for an arcade corner? Tweet me and include hashtag arcade corner. For more videos like this and everything else gaming related, you're already in the right place. You're on shacknews.com. Next time on Shaq's Arcade Corner.